Hi there, I'm Stuart Gibbs. I'm the author of a lot of middle grade book series like the Spy School series and the Fun Jungle series, the Moonbase Alpha series, the Charlie Thorne series, and even the Once Upon a Tim series. Uh, but I'm here today to talk to you about uh, the, uh, the Spy School graphic novel. Now, uh, I'm very, very excited about this. This is, the, uh, this is the graphic novel form of the first book in the Spy School series, Spy School. Uh, and uh, it is a retelling of, uh, of what happens in Spy School in graphic form, uh, done by the incredibly talented Anjan Sarkar. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, because it was graphic novel form, uh, it, you know, it's a different way to tell a story. And uh, it's a much more visual way to tell a story. So uh, even if you've read the original Spy School, uh, you're going to find some surprises in this book. And uh, I... Uh, so I, you know, if you can, well, I mean, I'll just flip through. I mean, they're just the 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 drawings are are incredible in here. Uh, what uh, um one of those places that uh, things are uh, very different is is right on right at the start. Uh, the way that uh, the spy school novel begins is not really the way that I thought. I um it's not the most visual way uh to begin a story. Uh, if you're going to be telling it in graphic novel form, and so I decided to uh, change that up and introduce my uh, my characters and, and uh, bring us into the story in a, in a, in a very different way. Uh, so um, I'm uh, uh, we're going to uh, sort of show you uh, first of all the 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 way that the book uh, begins in the first place is is with a uh, a redacted letter. That's uh, that's what we call a letter uh, that the often the government prints that has. Uh, parts of it blacked out, uh, and um, so uh, you you can see that there. Uh, we could actually just show you the the actual letter in, in kind of a cool form right here, right off the get go. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll start by by uh, reading you uh, uh, this um, uh, this beginning right here, uh, the way that the, that begins uh, in in the real book, and and you, and we'll show you the pictures as as I read along. So so we can see it starts at the Russian embassy in Washington D.C., which is a very uh, blocky, uh, not particularly attractive building with a, with a school bus in front. And then you see that some some kids are getting off the school bus, including this one kid uh, you know is here with a backpack, and uh, they're moving past some pretty imposing looking uh, guards as he comes in, and then. Uh, you know, here they are on a on a tour, and we we have a tour guide saying, "American children, please follow me to Hall of Heroes, where you will see what real leaders are like." That's I realize maybe not the best Russian accent of all time, but I'm I, uh, I'm an author, I'm not an actor, uh, and so they come through the Hall of Heroes, and the 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 guide is showing them things like the you know bust of of uh, Stalin, and uh, and uh, that kid with the backpack who we're starting to realize now might be kind of important in the story. He he stops to tie his shoe by that bust of Stalin. He looks around a little suspiciously, notices that the guards aren't paying attention, so he reaches up and he clicks the nose on the Stalin bust that opens a uh, secret door, and then the kid slips through there and suddenly finds out that he's up against some uh, imposing bad guys. But, you know, quickly he kicks some butt uh, and some other body parts there, and he, and he defeats them really, really quickly. And then he, uh, he unzips his backpack, and uh, we start to realize, he takes out some school supplies, which we realize are not normal school supplies. They're kind of like spy school supplies. I mean, this kid is obviously not a normal kid. And he, he uh, comes and he sticks uh, uh, what looks like an eraser to the... Uh, uh, to lock on a door, and then he he, uh, he pulls out a, a, what looks like a pen, but of course it's not really going to be a pen. And, and now another uh, a Russian uh, guard comes along. He starts shooting at him, and the, the kid uh, pushes the plunger on his pen, which in and like I said, not really a pen, not really an eraser. The eraser, and the eraser is actually an explosive, and it detonates and it blows the lock off the door, and it whacks the the uh, guard in the head and knocks him out. So now there's three unconscious guards, and, and now uh, our, our hero. Uh, uses what looks like a ruler and pries open uh, an elevator uh, door and then he uses what looks like an umbrella but it's actually a grappling hook and he fires it up and it and and then uh you know slides down through the elevator shaft comes into another big room where he it uh, looks like a normal room, uh, but then he, uh, it's, it's, uh, he, he, but he suspects something is probably not quite right, so he takes out what looks like a, a water bottle, but it's actually, a, it, it fires out a mist, and when he shoots the mist out, it reveals a network of laser beams crossing the room, so he says, okay, well, I, I can't get through all these, so he uh, takes off the panel, and uh, turns out, you know, clips some wires, and, and throws the room into blackout, takes out the, uh, 
laser beams and then just uses his flashlight to walk through the room. Uh, gets down to another uh, uh, door that he blows off uh, the hinges once again. Uh, then he uh, you know, finds himself in a big computer room. And he... Uh, he really, once again, totally knows what he's doing. Uh, <clears throat> dismantles one of the server boxes. Uh, find, you know, can read Russian. Finds what he's looking for, and uh, now he takes out a little cute uh, USB uh, hidden in a little bear and uses what looks like a, a, uh, a calculator, but it's not a normal calculator again. And uh, you know, it helps him figure out a way to enter the top secret passcode he needs. So he enters the passcode, which is very long, and now for the first time. Something doesn't quite go right for this guy. Uh, he gets an uh, improper passcode uh, notification and the, uh, the message passcode denied. Now he's, he's, he's cool. He's starting to evaporate a little bit. He's starting to get a little worried. And so he enters another code. Uh-oh, no, gets an improper passcode worried. Notice again, when told uh, defensive security, uh, security measures are initiated. And now a countdown starts from 10, 9, 8. And now he's worried. He, oh, okay. Well, he's got to enter another passcode, another passcode, and, and and, and then uh, suddenly he's really running out of time, gets the final improper passcode. We go wide in his eyes. He's really worried, and kaboom! I mean, look at that. That is a great uh, uh, kaboom there, really. Or it's a, well, it's a boom. Boom! Uh, and, uh, you know, all sorts of stuff goes flying. This looks very bad for this kid. Then we get the uh, game over sign here with the smoking uh, sneakers. And, and uh, you hear somebody off screen say, oh, that sucks. And we, we look and, and it, we realize this wasn't a real spy mission. Uh, uh, our hero, Ben Ripley, uh, is sitting in his room. Uh, he's just a normal kid. He's not a spy. He, and he's, he's looking, he's been playing uh, a game on his computer, uh, which is actually, you see his room, it's full of, of cool spy stuff, including what, what looks like kind of a James Bond sort of poster in the background and, and a spy con poster. Uh, on his computer screen, we see the, the warning. Uh, you have failed in your mission again. Would you like to try w once more? And that's got the CIA logo there. And uh, so Ben says, yeah, I'm going to beat you one of these days. And he clicks replay. But before he can start, uh, he hears uh, somebody coming up the stairs outside his room. So he closes his computer very quickly. He uh, pulls out... Uh, uh, a textbook, and he hears somebody call from outside, Benjamin Ripley, it's a school night. You had better not be playing that infernal spy game again. And somebody opens the door, it's his mom, and uh, Ben suddenly is, you know, very cleverly, you know, he's hidden his, his computer, he's got his uh, textbook over his uh, chest, and he says, what's that, mom? Sorry, I must have dozed off while studying. And his mother does not look like she's bought this at all. And he comes in, opens his computer, realizes, you know, it's, it's warm to the touch. It's, he's definitely been logged in and, and, and to, to the spy game. She says, again, I'm tired of you wasting your time playing this silly game. Ben protests. He says, it's not a game. It's a test to prove yourself to the CIA. They're probably monitoring everyone who plays to identify future agents. And his mother sort of rolls her eyes and says, it's a game, Ben. That's all. No one's monitoring you. Well, turns out, Mom is wrong, because we cut right away to, meanwhile, at CIA headquarters, where we find that there are, in fact, people monitoring Ben. And, and we have a, a tech there who turns around and says, his name is Benjamin Ripley. He's played the simulation over 500 times. He has strong math skills, decent languages, and he lives close by. And a very shadowy figure says, sounds like the perfect patsy. Bring him in. And we find another uh, person standing over by a window, he turns around. Man is actually wearing a a, uh, a tuxedo. Looks very, very suave and debonair. And he says, "Yes, sir." And so uh, we will uh, end at that point there. That is that is the introduction for uh, Spy School, the graphic novel. Um, like I said, I'm very excited about this. I think uh, uh, if, if you've read Spy School, you'll enjoy this version. If you haven't read Spy School, it's a great introduction to the series. Uh, Anjan Sarkar could not have done a better job of illustrating this. So uh, please, please, please uh, check it out and enjoy it. Enjoy it.